Welcome to the Desperate Gods Art Asset Overview. This week David and I worked on a new jam game based on some old board games. And the main challenge for me was coming up with enough content. One of the ideas we had was that the game was going to have a lot of cards and the cards were each going to have a unique painting on them. Originally I was a bit optimistic. I thought I would get over a hundred different paintings done in time but I was only able to get 40 done. I think this still turned out to be a sufficient number of cards for the game that we made. In terms of style, I knew I had to make a lot of cards, so I just went with what was easiest for me. I wanted something to look kind of like classic fantasy art or magic cards. I think each card took me around an hour and a half on average. I had a number of other art assets that I needed to produce also, like the board, the dice, all of those things. I wanted to keep the workflow on these assets as simple as possible, so I just did a simple normal map that I generated with Crazy Bump for most of them, with the only exception being the hit point counters that you'll see later. The video you've been watching is recorded from my Twitch TV broadcast, but played back at 5,000% normal speed. So as you can see, I spent quite a lot of time working on this game. In fact, I think I probably spent more time working on this one than I did on Receiver. But interestingly, I didn't feel as tired or fatigued on this one. I read some comments on YouTube that suggested the game took us longer than seven days to complete. They are absolutely correct. In fact, the game took us around 8.5 days to complete. Since David and I were streaming the entire time, you can check out the stream archives at Twitch TV slash Wolfire Aubrey or Twitch TV slash Wolfire David. The only really experimental idea we had for the card art was to make the windows on the cards kind of three-dimensional in a way. But after a few quick tests, we realized that we didn't have the time to make sure that that was going to work. So we decided to abandon that concept. I think ultimately that was the right call. If we had included it, it would have been a little out of place with all of the other more traditional aspects of it being like a real board game. One of the easiest parts of this project was that I never had to wonder about what I was going to do next. I just needed to paint more cards. Although it might seem like a trivial detail to some, one aspect of production that I wanted to take really seriously was the creation of flavor text for the cards. For Magic cards, or other card games, usually the text is just some kind of cone or idiom, or maybe it's a joke, but it's some short, simple to understand text, and I wondered what it would be like if they were actual quotations. So I decided to write a source document to draw the quotes from. I was a little bit nervous about this aspect of it, so I didn't record any of the footage of me writing it. I ended up writing a short creation myth that is about six and a half pages long. I showed it to some of the people watching my stream and they seemed to like it okay. It more or less outlines the game world that the game takes place in. I believe you can find it in the Git repository for the game. It's called the Pen Compendia. Using this method, I was really happy with how the flavor text came out. Sometimes it's kind of obtuse or taken completely out of context, and I personally find that interesting. So I think production went pretty well on this. Almost 100% of the art that I made made it into the game, and we even had time to iterate a few key assets like the board and the player tokens. I think that's one of the reasons why the game looks so polished. On Receiver, I was really struggling to get the basic assets in and functional, and even then, in the first release, they had a lot of problems. So I'm happy that this one is mostly finished and I don't have to mess with it anymore. 
One area that could use a little bit more work is maybe changing the card text and some of the rules a little bit. David and I both took a turn on editing the cards, so there's some inconsistencies. Those are pretty minor problems though, and they should be easy to fix. Here's me painting again. Near the end of the jam, I realized that I didn't have enough art for item cards, so I spent a lot of time on the last day or so working on those. The items in the game are kind of critical for gameplay reasons. For the 3D models in the game, I wanted everything to have kind of the feel of real materials, and I wanted them to be different, so the player tokens look like they're maybe some kind of crystal, and the hit point tokens look like they're made out of stone, the coins are metal. For these player mats, I wanted them to look like they were leather. For the logo, I was also inspired by classic fantasy art. I wanted something that had that feeling. I was also inspired by the old Cyanosis logos and some old arcade machines. That's it for this art asset overview. Don't forget, you can get the game for free at wolfire.com slash dg. Thanks.